So that's one thing. So you can use that for leverage on the phone, the way you introduce yourself. You introduce lose yourself with, with your title of what you're there for, and that begins to frame that conversation. That begins to give you influence and authority in that conversation. Yes? Now, what happens if you go into a room? Because right now we're talking about how to become the most powerful, most authoritative, most influential person in the room. What if I come into a room, and all of you guys have freaking titles? All of you guys are someone important. All of you guys are doing something that's significant, contributing. Like, how am I going to stand out now? Because everyone else has a title. Shit. I can't, like, flex with my title. I can't, you know, write it on with bigger, bold letter. Like, hey, you know, manager, supervisor. Like, I'm someone important. All of a sudden, everybody else has something important. You know, regional. Oh, man. I'm not the, the most influential man. So how can I make myself stand out? How can I make myself more influential, more authoritative, even though you guys have titles like me or even above me? I can still become the most influential. Why? This is the good news. This is When I tell people this, it takes a lot of pressure off of them because they think they need to have like be intimidated by people's titles and their positions. You don't need to be intimidated to put yourself under or beneath anyone. They are people, right? I don't care if it's the president. It doesn't matter. You can still position yourself to have the most power. Look, title is the lowest way, the lowest position of influence. Using your title, that's the lowest level of influence. Lowest. So even as a parent, if you use, go clean your room. Why? Because I'm your mom and I said so. <laughs> You're flexing your title. Because I'm your mom. Because I'm your dad. And I said so. That's the lowest level of influence. That's the, the weakest way for you to build your kids. You flexing your title, using your mom title. Because now they'll do it because they have to, right? Because you're the mom. And if you're the boss, then they have to because they want to keep their job. If they're your kid, they have to because they want to keep their phone and they want to keep their toy. They want to keep their, their curfew, whatever, right? They want to keep that. They want to get punished. Like, fine. Fine. So they go and do it with what kind of attitude? What kind of attitude do they go do it? Negative. Right? Negative. And in that negative attitude, in that negative emotion, in that, oh, why? Always, you ruin everything. You always have to ruin it. You're so mean. <laughs> right? So now with that energy, they're going and cleaning their room or they're going and doing their homework. What kind of quality work are they going to do? But they'll do it. But they'll do just enough just to get by, just so they don't get in trouble because you're using the lowest level of influence. Because they're doing it because they have to. Because you're flexing the title. No, take that freaking title off, take that badge down, and get real influence. Like, learn how to communicate. Learn how to connect with them. Learn how to get into their world. Learn how to make them feel understood. Learn how to envision them. Learn how to really influence them. Not hide behind a title. Real leaders won't even need that title. Real leaders will just lead. Even if I go into a place and I don't have that title or position, I'm still going to influence all of you guys. Start creating connection with people. Start communicating to knowing what they like, what they don't like, what their goals are, because this is all leverage that you're going to have to create influence with them. But what happened? And you do that everywhere you went, every meeting, every, every time you went to work, you did that. What do you think is going to happen? People are going to notice. Right? And you lead yourself. You get things done. So that way when there's an opportunity, like for a promotion or a spot, guess what they're going to think about? Guess. The person who is making themselves known, who is influential, who people are talking about, who, who's you know getting the things done, who doesn't have to go and keep following up to make sure you freaking do your job, you're doing it on yourself. Those are the ones who are going to stand out. Start to position yourself like that, guys. So when you go into a room, okay? Let's, let's take the title off. Let's say I go into this room and all of you guys have the same title. Okay, so that removes that one, right? So now what? So how can I make myself stand out? Now comes the next part, the delivery. This is how I communicate, how I'm able to deliver a message. Can I create interest? Can I keep your attention? Can I engage you? 
Am I boring? Am I monotone? Am I saying the same thing all the time and I'm giving a lot of energy and, you know, just teaching you guys about phone etiquette and, you know, you gotta be nice on the phone and have good manners? <laughs> That'd be boring, right? Like, it takes discipline, okay? Just so you guys know, I'm a very inward, reserved person. I don't like being in front of people. I don't like public speaking. I used to avoid it all my life. Now I freaking do it for a living. It's a discipline for me to get up here and deliver a message. It's a discipline for me to walk around and smile and give energy like this. That's not how I normally am. I'm very reserved and quiet and to myself. But you will never know, right? Why? Because I understand this. I can go into a room full of very professional, and I've done this many times, where people who are very successful, more than me, way beyond I can even think. I'm like, wow, I can go to a room like that and, and, and be the one that has the most influence before we leave. Because I don't care about your title. I don't care about my title. I care about your heart. I care about connecting to you as a person, bringing value to you. I'm good at delivering a message because I've developed that skill in myself. So if I go into a room and everybody has the same title, I'm gonna make myself stand out on how I can deliver a message. I'm gonna engage your attention. I'm gonna come over here and walk on this side of the room so I can make sure that I have your attention back here too. Right? The delivery of what you say, so it's not just about what you're saying, it's about how you say it, right? To get their attention, what if, like, what if your delivery sucks with your kids? And they're like, kids, they need to be stimulated, right? They need to have fun, they need to have something, and you're like, hey, mijo, what are you working there? Oh, wow. Oh, you did that all by yourself? Good job. You think they're gonna keep talking to you and sharing? You're getting boring. You, they need like, you need to match their energy. Like, you need to make them stimulate. Like, wow, that's really cool. Like, wow, let me see. Man, you guys see this? Like, even changing levels. Like, moving around like that. They're engaged. They're going to want to be around you. This is how you deliver a message. Your delivery matters a lot. If you're talking on the phone or in person and you're just flat and boring and monotone, you're lacking influence. So not, you're gonna lose them. Do you guys like it talking to somebody who's just like this all the time? Or, yeah, you know how it is. It's just hard these days. I have no life. It's just like, ugh, I'm crying. I don't wanna be around them, you know? Come on. So delivery, how you deliver a message. Your body language. Your, your facial expression your tone, the volume that you're speaking in, the rhythm, changing your rhythm, right? Sometimes you gotta go fast and go hard and go loud and then other times you gotta stop and emphasize certain points. You feel the difference there? It makes people engaged because you're delivering a message in a way that's keeping their attention and this is gonna make you stand out. This is gonna make you have more influence in the room. Think about it, like, you know those, uh, the, the extroverted people who are, it's very easy for them to talk to people? The very social, but, the social butterflies, the ones who are like, everybody's their friend. The lovebirds, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's very easy for them, right? And people like them to be around, why? They have a lot of influence. Why? Because how they deliver their message. They're talking to you free and fun, they have energy, they're positive, they're expressive, they're moving around, their face, their tone, they're giving you energy, right? Yes or no? Yes. There's a lot of emotions going up and down and that keeps your attention and that's very attractive, it's very charming, it's very persuasive, it's very influential. So we, even though you're not normally like that, if you wanna go into a room and position yourself to be standing out, you have to learn.